future. Uh, the timing uh, will be propitious for the introduction of such draft resolutions. Mm -hmm. I understand, uh, according to press reports, that the Palestinians still persist mm. and in, that's a, mm. going, in going to the Security Council uh, for the second time to discuss uh, a, a similar draft resolution. Yes. And does the Haredi say if we, uh, if the Arab, uh, along with the Palestinians, amend the resolution submitted to the United Nations Security Council once again? And the timing was proposal or, uh, for a resolution. But anyway, the resolution itself, does it have an enforcement mechanism? I mean here, it was not submitted under cha uh, Chapter 6 or 7 of the United Nations Charter. And hence, it did not really have any kind of mechanism. And um, if Israel did not even respond to uh, a possible UN Security Council resolution, then there will be no kind of um, no kind of of, uh, uh, of of response, or even no kind of punishment that could be applied on Israel or any kind of. Um, response from the international community. So how do you view the case here? Well, I, I, I don't think that uh, we will see uh, a, a, resolu a Security Council resolution concerning the Palestinian question being adopted or being based on chapter, chapter 7 of the Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter. Mm. This is the first thing. The second thing, as things stand now, in the Middle East and in the Palestinian question and Israeli-Palestinian negotiations, uh, and that should not be should should not taken to mean that I, I'm very I'm fully supportive of this. But this is the situation as it exists on the ground. You you mm -hmm. cannot and when I say you, I'm referring to the Palestinians, particularly and the Arabs. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, possibly imagine that you are going to adopt any uh, resolution concerning the Palestinian question without, the, uh, without, first of all, coordinating with the American administration, mm. whether the present one or any other administration in the future. And mm. secondly, uh, we have to take into uh, consideration uh, Palestinian inter-Palestinian politics. Because uh, as far as this point is concerned, I am afraid that I'm afraid that the Palestinian Authority went to the Security Council uh, in order to achieve, uh, as its uh, calculations mm. led it to believe, uh, to achieve a, 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 a political success vis-à-vis uh, -vis, uh, Hamas. Right. But it backfired on the Palestinian Authority because I guess the, uh, the two winners mm. In, 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 in what we are discussing today, the, 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 the non-adoption of this draft resolution mm. is first of all Hamas, and the second thing is the uh, Hamas as a representative of the uh, extreme, uh, extremism on the Palestinian side. Mm. Mm. And on the other, uh, the, uh, the second winner is the uh, right-wing government of Netanyahu, and uh, and I I and, and in the same context I I don't see why the Palestinian Authority and the Arab League would would persist would insist mm. on going to the Security Council once again so in order for these two sides to win uh, the propaganda propaganda war I would I I, I I I think that the best option now available for the Palestinian Authority and for the Arab League and and the Arab government is to push for the success of the national uh, unity uh, government, the mm -hmm. Palestinian mm -hmm. national unity government. Mm -hmm. The second thing, madam, is to uh, speed up, uh, 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 if not to start uh, uh, seriously, the reconstruction of Gaza. Thirdly, and this, is, and this concerns the Palestinians themselves, uh, uh, to hold uh, presidential and parliamentary elections, both in the West Bank and in the Gaza Strip, uh, because what my, my I, I really believe, Madam, that what the Palestinian question needs now 
is a new legitimacy, a new voice, a new authority that would speak with one voice to the whole international community, mm. including the coming Israeli government. And this is another, another problem. Uh, uh, right now, we don't have a, a clear idea of how the next Israeli Knesset uh, would be made up. What will be mm. the main, main parties uh, that could uh, muster uh, a working majority within this Knesset? Right. If I may just ask you here to give me your uh, point of view of this new bid of the Palestinians to join the International Criminal Court. Well, I, I, okay. I, 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 my, uh, my question is the following, Madam. Will that help the Palestinians in the future Israeli-Palestinian neg negotiations or not? Mm. Will that help the international community, the Arab government, the Arab League, the Arab people, to see a resumption of peace negotiations between the Israelis and the Palestinians uh, post-Israeli uh, uh, mm. elections? These, these are the two main questions. We congratulate, we congratulate Palestine of being admitted as member in the International Criminal Court. Mm. But that uh, the question remains: how that will help in the in the resumption of the uh, peace negotiations, mm. and how will that help the Palestinian cause on the international scene? Yes, I guess all these questions are to be raised uh, in few uh, minutes with uh, Ambassador. Uh, uh, Abu Shanab, Hazem Abu Shanab, who is a high-ranking official uh, uh, at the Fatah um, uh, movement. Um, let me hear thank you, Ambassador Hussein Haridi, uh, for, uh, former Assistant Foreign Minister and expert in the Middle East. And we'll get back to uh, Ambassador Hazem after a quick look on this report on the Palestinian uh, whole issue and come back for discussion.
defect recognition of statehood at the UN General Assembly in 2012, making Palestinians eligible to join the ICC.